Right, so in the um, in the last video, I talked about um, all the parts that are needed to uh, get a TFT dash um, built. So once I have all those all those parts, um, what I now can do is start making up one of these boards. So I haven't, like I said in the last video, I have a number of these boards, and the first step to making one of these up is uh, to get all the resistors in place. So um, I have here a set of uh, 10k resistors and if you just have a look at the number I've basically got nine of them so the TFT dash um, interface board uses nine 10k resistors now one of the things that um, I never do when I'm building one of these things is assume anything so essentially I don't trust any of these resistors until I've tested them and I basically just use a straightforward multimeter. I test every, every single one, make sure it's around 10K. Uh, obviously I accept there's going to be a tolerance um, level which these things adhere to. I can accept a certain um, margin of, of, of intolerance, but if it's you know within 5%, that's usually fine. So um, so that's the first step. So. Uh, Let's uh, let's get on testing these these resistors and start mounting the resistors onto the board and um, get them soldered. Right, so good news, all those resistors tested fine. Um, so let's mount them onto the board and do the rest of the resistors. So there are all the resistors mounted. So what I do next is um, have to solder each of the, uh, the resistors in place. Um, now one of the things I want to avoid, as you can just see, it's just happened here, is these little components popping out when I turn the board over. So I've created this, which is basically a component holder. And what I'll do is I'll just slot this over the top of the um, of the components and then when I when I turn the board over it basically just holds all of the resistors firmly in place whilst I do some soldering so um yeah so let's got let's start um, soldering these uh, these resistors down <laughs> So that's all the uh, resistors in place, and uh, that's um, turned out pretty well. So um, with uh, with all that in place, uh, the next step is to solder in the uh, transistor, which goes literally just there, and that is a, uh, a TIP120 um, transistor, which I have one of those just there. That transistor turns on your bike's fan. Uh, well, actually, it turns on the relay, which turns on the bike's fan, but the relay's on the bike. Um, so this, I just essentially using this transistor as a switch, um, 
so the, the microcontroller just sends a very small signal to the transistor, the transistor then then allows the, the larger current to pass through which, which turns on the relay. Um, this here is a, a voltage regulator. Um, I'll explain the theory behind that a little bit later, but mainly this is for the fuel gauge. Uh, so this, this allows um, the microcontroller to register the, um, the very small resistance changes that occurs in, uh, at, the fuel, uh, at your fuel float. Because I think there's a, there's a change between, it's literally like one ohm or something like that, or 10 ohms, it's, it's very small. And um, it's not, it, it's basically too small for the microcontroller to pick up um, the resistance changes um, using the analog inputs on the, on the controller. So what I have to do is I have to put that through an adjustable vol voltage regulator um, to keep a, a constant current source going through the regulator. And then what happens when the resistance changes, the voltage regulator ensures that there's a different, uh, a different voltage that occurs at the pin so you've got a maximum between zero and five volts and that is um, re easily registered by the microcontroller and then I can quite easily read your, your, your fuel flow level. Um, got two uh, capacitors here these are filtering capacitors mainly just to um, mainly just to filter the, the any noise that comes into the speed signal and RPM um, signal so uh, they just eliminate noise and and they will similarly go there and there so um let's get on uh, mounting these and we'll just uh, mount the connector connecting pins bluetooth um, and a real-time clock and there's a final noise filtering capacitor which goes here so uh, let's get on with that and also um, fresh off the 3d printer are is the enclosure the covering enclosure um, so this has come out nicely. I do a quick check on this just to make sure it's ex acceptable, um, you know, quality levels and, 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 and so forth. But um, yeah, it's, um, it's, it's turned out quite well. Um, there's a covering screen which, which goes over here um, and I'll, in one of the next videos I'll detail how I make those up. Um, but that's that's the waterproof screen that goes over the top and is sealed um, to to the edge here, and um, you know so just protects protects your screen and the insides from from any uh, rain. Um, this here is um, the base, uh, so obviously you can see there's tons of 3D printed supports. I need to remove those, and um, this is where the the screen and and basically all the boards and and everything sit. Raspberry Pi will sit there. The Arduino with the the interface board will sit there, and the power supply sits there. And then the two the the, the boards are connected together um, with some with some basic wiring. And um, yeah, so uh, that's um, that's the three D printing largely done. Uh, I just need to print off some um, uh, buttons and uh, and some side covering panels and a. Uh, a battery covering panel which will go just there it's covered by supports at the moment but that just sort of lives there and covers the battery compartment which is replaceable um, which stores the real-time clock settings so let's get on finishing off this board
Okay, so uh, that's pretty much um, some more components mounted onto the board. There's a one capacitor which is now remaining to go in. Um, as you can see, this is a quite larger capacitor because it doesn't need to um, it doesn't need to account for signals which are as as quite high frequency as as the speed and RPM. So it can be a bit larger and a bit a bit more a bit more smoothing. I think that is the word I like to use. And that is for the fuel sensor. So this is so that I get a nice clean uh, signal of, of a fuel reading from your fuel float without any electrical noise from the engine, basically. So that's that. Um, so then other things I'm now going to mount are these are the pins. So um, uh, these are the two um, uh pins sets of pins that go here on the edge um, I've got five sets of eight pins which just mount here you've got one two three four five uh, sets of eight pins which get mounted there and one set of six pins which get mounted there and um, once I've mounted these um, I'll, I'll mount the final connector which is the bike um, connector um, which you'll all see on the back of the dash and um, and then finally some cables which will which will be uh, which will be um, connected into these these points here and these are just for power um, 5 volts going in 12 volts going out which then goes out to the to the 12 volt converting power supply or power converter whatever you want to call it so um, yeah that's it so let's uh, let's continue Okay, so that ear, oh, that's all the pins mounted and soldered. So um, using the technique I earlier described, I've managed to solder all the pins and get all that mounted, clock, real time clocks mounted. And one thing is also mounted is the uh, is the noise filtering fuel gorge capacitor. One last thing that has to be mounted in addition, so this is the last component that's mounted, is the connector. So this, this is the last thing to be mounted, that gets soldered on. And this is the bit that connects to your bike and goes on the board, just there. Once I've done that, I'll be um, soldering on the, the cables. And that's these four connections here and these two there. These two are primarily for power. These four are for the option and select buttons, light sensor and ambient temperature sensor, which are ex live external to the TFT dash. And we'll be soldering those on in just, um, in, in just a short time. of the stage one build complete um, so basically what we've assembled here is a um, is a shield an Arduino shield so that um, the Arduino can talk to the bike and obviously this board is designed to talk to the phase a thousand so um, that's essentially what we've assembled here and this is what this this board is it's it's a it's a phase a thousand Arduino shield um and this is what this is what is is connecting to the arduino and and the arduino is programmed to use this shield to to read all of the bikes um, inputs so this is largely done uh so the only thing now that has to be done is mounting all of the wires the cables so the option and select buttons light sensor cable and ambient temperature sensor cable and these two are for power and uh, these these will go into into the enclosure and uh, and then and then we'll we'll uh, we'll glue these down. Um, so one thing I haven't, I haven't explained is that I do use hot glue to um, basically just hold these things down. So I'll put a little bit here. I'll put a little bit here, and it serves two purposes: is is to insulate the electrical connections, 
and also when it when the hot glue dries and hardens it stops uh, vibration from affecting these components and potentially causing uh, any uh, loosening of the, the cabled connections mainly here and here and so they're the main areas I hot glue and and just fasten these these bits down um, obviously these these components aren't subject to, to heat at all you know so they won't they won't melt the hot glue in in, in, in normal use um, but it's literally just to fasten things down and just to keep it held down um, so um, in the next in the next video uh, of uh, the continuation of a stage one build uh, you'll see uh, me use some hot glue to then fasten the cables down um, and the primary well another reason for that is also when I'm working with the board and I'm and I'm and I'm I'm moving it around and such I don't want those cables bending back and forth hence causing a loosening of the solder joints and, and potentially a snapping off so as soon as I soldered the cable onto the board I hot glue it in place wait for the glue to dry then I'm free to move around and I know that 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 connection that joint there the cable to the board is solid it's not going to go anywhere it's not going to break off and um, once it's inside the TFT dash um, in normal use and you know with the vibrations that were, are transmitted to the dash th from the bike uh, it's not going to come loose so it's, it's gonna it's gonna last for so a good long time so um, so yeah so this is this is the bike interface board complete and on to uh, the next phase of the, of the